as Africa's leading defense news portal. Defense Web aims to give you the latest updates on African defense, the South African National Defense Force, and the defense industry. In this week's edition, there is still no date for a high-level Southern African Development Community meeting on Mozambique, and South Africa's defense budget is falling to 0.86% of its gross domestic product. In SANDF news, the Rattel marks 43 years in service as its replacement slips further away. Mapisa Ngokula's ministry is one of the most expensive in cabinet. The reserve force loses a dedicated and professional officer. The chief of the SANDF farewell tour will take place in six provinces. The SANDF misses its public protector into fair on deadline. Mbambo is the fifth SA Air Force chief since 1994, and stolen copper has been recovered during border operations. In industry news, the Aerospace and Defense Master Plan identifies short-term revenue opportunities. The SA Air Force is worried Denol is dragging it down, and Solidarity wants Denol to work, despite a court order against it. In African Defense Defense news. Still no date for high-level SADAC slash Mozambique meeting. South African President Saul Ramaphosa could shed no new light on the Southern African Development Community SADAC approach to ongoing Islamist violence in northern Mozambique during a parliamentary question and answer session on the 6th of May. He told parliamentarians in a virtual session that an extraordinary double choke summit on SADAC scheduled for 29th of April was postponed and a new date is yet to be announced. Unconfirmed reports have it the Southern African Regional Bloc will send a force to Mozambique. It will reportedly comprise three light infantry battalions of 620 soldiers each and 270 strong special forces squadrons as the vanguard of a SADAC force to combat and neutralize insurgents in northern Mozambique. An unnamed number of attack and other helicopters as well as patrol ships, a submarine and a maritime aircraft to patrol the Capo Delgado coast will also be part of the force. The maritime component of the deployment is reportedly to intercept supplies for the insurgents and combat criminal trafficking believed to be the source of financing for the insurgency. SA defense budget falling to only 0.86% of GDP. The South African defense budget for 2021-2022 is just 0.86% of the GDP, down from 0.97%, causing experts to caution that the reduction will have far-reaching implications for the South African National Defense Force. The 2020-2021 defense budget is 54.2 billion rand, but for 2021-2022, it falls to 46.2 billion rand, representing a 14% decrease. Much of this decrease comes from the shrinkage of the special defense account, which goes from 5.2 billion rand in 2020-2021 to 1.005 billion rand in 2021-2022. The Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans requested more funding from National Treasury for border safeguarding, the midlife upgrade of South African Navy vessels, the special defense account, and an exit mechanism for Department of Defense personnel, but we're told there is little scope for extra funds. While most areas of the SANDF have had their budgets cut, the compensation of employees, COE, remains virtually unchanged, but that means the percentage of budget spent on salaries increases from 57% in 2020 to 2021 to 63% in 2021-2022. The full report of the defense budget can be found on our website. In SANDF news, Rattel marks 43 years service as replacement slips further away. The Parliament's Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans has heard there was no progress on Project Hua Faced and the contract between Denel, Arms Corps and the Department of Defense for the long-delayed Badger Infantry Fighting Vehicle is not feasible in its current form. The Badger is now over four years behind schedule and given the problem state-owned Denel finds itself facing, there is no firm indication of when, if ever, the Landward Force will take delivery of the first of 240 44 in nine variants. The Department of Defense is concerned about the sustainability of Denel and the future of Project Hurfaster, as well as other Denel projects. Secretary for Defense Sonto Kujo said discussions will take place with Cabinet next week. If Hurfaster, the Badger project, goes ahead, it will boost the SA Army by partially replacing the Rattel fleet. The 2020 Aero Space and Defense Master Plan has it Hurfaster would be beneficial to the defense industry if it proceeds. The Master Plan notes the delay by defense budget cuts resulted in some subsystems becoming becoming obsolete and no longer available. The collapse of VR laser is another contributing factor. The cost of acquiring 150 Badger 30 section vehicles would be about 6 billion rand over 5 to 6 years. This would give the Army an effective infantry combat vehicle for the next 2 to 3 decades at a unit cost of $2.4 million, less than any imported vehicle and less than some basic armored personnel carriers, the master plan notes. 
regardless of who effaced it. The Rattel will be in service for at least the next 15 years, and the master plan sees a case for refurbishing, modernizing, and upgrading, such as with the night capability, sufficient Rattels for at least one mechanized infantry battalion, and converting others to replace older armored personnel carriers, reducing the new vehicle requirement by several hundred. Mapisa and Gokula's ministry, one of the most expensive in cabinet. Nosevewe Mapisa and Gokula's Ministry of Defense and Military Veterans is one of the most expensive in President Sol Ramaphosa's cabinet. An analysis prepared for one of Parliament's two defense oversight committees has it. The Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans at the beginning of May heard the cost of Mapisa and Gokula's ministry for the 2021-2022 financial year is 125.5 million rand, significantly higher than the 97.2 million rand spent in 2020-2021, according to researcher Dr. Wilhelm Janser van Rens. The amount spent on the Defence Ministry is no new phenomenon, and Parliament was made aware of it as far back as 2019. That was when Professor Yanni Rousseau of the Fiscal Cliff Study Group lamented the exorbitant cost of ministries in South Africa. He noted the Department of Defence has one of the highest costs of all ministries, 137.7 million rand for 2019-20, compared to National Treasury with then the lowest ministerial cost of 4.4 million rand. Reserve Force loses a dedicated and professional officer. The death in early May of Colonel Monica Muller leaves a void in the Office of Chief Defence Reserves. She was a pioneer for women throughout her 21-year career in the then SA Defence Force and brought her many skills to the Reserve Force after retirement from the SA Army in 1991. In his tribute to the woman who once held the post of director, woman and the predecessor to the SA National Defence Force, Reserve's Chief Major General Roy Anderson said Muller was a professional officer who maintained the highest standards at all times. Chief of SANDF farewell tour will take in six provinces. Between now and his change of command parade on the 28th of May, outgoing SA National Defence Force Chief General Soli Shalke will go from Limpopo in the north to the western Cape in the south on a national end of duty tour, bidding farewell to the airmen, medics, sailors and soldiers he commanded for 10 years. He will use the visit to introduce his successor, current Joint Operations Chief Lieutenant General Rudzani Mfawanya, meeting and greeting commanders of provincial groups. The tour, according to the SANDF director, Directorate Corporate Communication starts in Mpumalanga and will stop at the Middleburg base housing for SA Infantry Battalion. Then it's on to Limpopo, where the top level National Defence Force contingent will make three stops. The first is Palabora, home of 7 SA Infantry Battalion. From here, it's on to the Air Force Base Makado, where 85 Combat Flying School and the Airborne Services Lone Fighter Jet Squadron 2 are based. The final stop is Provincial Capital Polokwane, home to an SA Army General Support Base. Next on the artillery is Free State Capital Bloemfontein home to a number of SA Army units and 16 Squadron, which operates the South African Design and Built Royfar Combat Support Helicopter, as well as three military hospital. Then, it's on to the Northern Cape Capital Kimberley, which, like its Free State counterpart, is home to a number of military units, including three SA Infantry Battalion, 10 Anti-Aircraft Regiments, and the Air Defense Artillery School. SA Navy Fleet Headquarters in Simons Town is next on Shulker's farewell to a list, along with Saldana on the West Coast, where SAS Saldana, the Maritime Services Training Base, is housed, these are the only stops the retiring four-star general will make in the Western Cape. The final stop on the itinerary is KwaZulu Natal Port City, Durban, where presumably the tour group will take in Naval Base Durban, identified as the home base for the SA Navy patrol fleet. Back in the country's administrative capital, Shulker will prepare for his change of command parade at the Pretoria Military Sports Club in Tabashwane. SANDF misses public protector interfere on deadline. It appears the senior command structure of the National Defence Force is not an active participant in an ongoing public protector investigation investigation of how and why an unregistered Cuban drug was acquired by the SA National Defence Force. The investigation by Busi Siwe Mkwabani's office is one of three. The others are a task team appointed by Defence and Military Veterans Minister Nasevira Mapisangakula and a SA Police Service one initiated by Democratic Alliance parliamentarian Kobus Murray. At the beginning of May, Murray told Defence Web the public protector advocate leading the Cuban drug investigation received feedback from the SA Health Military Products Regulatory Authority with no response from the SANDF, probably in the form of its military health service. A deadline of Friday 30th of April came and went without any public protector slash SANDF contact. This, according to Johannesburg Daily, the citizen will see the Chapter 9 institution resorting to hard powers. Public protector spokesman Opa Seguale is reported as saying this include subpoenaing the SANDF. The Military Command Council appears to be refusing to cooperate with the Public Protector, he said. Mbambo is 5th SA Air Force Chief since 1994. 
When he takes up the post of SA Air Force Chief on the 1st of June, Lieutenant General Wiseman Mbambo becomes the 5th Commander of the Airborne Service of the SA National Defense Force since its establishment on the 27th of April 1994. In what is, in some circles, seen as a break with tradition, Mbambo is the first Chief of the SA Air Force in the democratic era not to wear pilot's wings. Prior to Mbambo's appointment, then SA Air Force Deputy Chief Lieutenant General Mzayifani Botelezi was acting chief following Msamung's retirement. He goes back to being number two in the airborne service come June. Stolen copper recovered during border ops. Copper is the latest addition to the growing list of goods confiscated by soldiers protecting South Africa's territorial integrity as part of the Operation Corona Mandate. Soldiers deployed at the Pont Drift port of entry between South Africa and Botswana stopped a vehicle, presumably during a route stop and search operation at Wipe. Closer inspection revealed copper valued at over 3,400 Rand, for which the vehicle's occupants had no explanation. They, with their 70,000 Rand vehicle, and the copper were handed to police for further investigation. Some distance from Pontriff at the Madimba Ops Base east of Mursina, soldiers, according to SA National Defence Force communication officers, had immense success and confiscated just on 1 million rands worth of illegal cigarettes found for spaza shops and other illegal outlets in Gauteng. Cigarettes and an unknown number of suspects were handed to police. And in industry news, Aerospace and Defence Master Plan identifies short-term revenue opportunities. The Aerospace and Defence Master Plan document has identified a number of pending export opportunities that could begin to generate revenues within 18 months for the South African industry. In Oman, there is a potential 18 billion rand contract for upgrading existing G6 self-propelled howitzers and supplying additional G6s and establishing a local maintenance and training facility. Half of the Pakistan Army's requirement for truck-mounted guns has gone to China's Narinko, but the remaining half is still potentially available for it now, given government-to-government -government intervention. This would be worth some 7 billion rand, with the first revenue flowing within 18 months. The master plan states there is ammunition to the value of 500 million rand in store at Rainbow de Ammunition, waiting to be shipped, which has been held up for the better part of two years by difficulties and inaction at the National Conventional Arms Control Committee level. They are signed ammunition contracts for RDM ammunition worth some 4 billion rand that would be signed immediately on the pending permits being issued. There is a longer-term order pipeline of 14 billion rand pending, according to the master plan. Denol Land Systems has a 3.5 billion rand potential upgrade opportunity of the existing G6 fleet, with first revenue flow from 18 months of commencement. It has conducted trials of the T5 self-propelled 155mm howitzer with a possible initial order with 800 million rand. The company also has an opportunity for 700 million rand worth of new technology weapon anti-material rifles with revenue flowing within 12 months. The full requirements is worth with some 3.5 billion rand. Denel Vehicle Systems signed a contract for 30 RG31 mine protected vehicles for 300 million rand, with a possible follow-on order for another 70 vehicles. Brazil has contracted a local firm to carry out integration of the Denel Dynamics A Data Air-to-Air missile on the Gripen E fighters being acquired for its Air Force. This represents another potential opportunity for the South African industry, the master plan states. Denel dragging the SA Air Force down. The sorry state of affairs at Denel is impacting on the ability of the SA Air Force to meet ordered commitments resulting in, to date, a request for guidance as regards Air Force Financial Authority approving payments to Denel Aeronautics as aircraft systems are unavailable. The request from Major General Satete Malakoane, the Chief Director of Force Deployment and Support, is in the form of a letter to Acting Air Force Chief Lieutenant General Mzayifani Botelezi for the Services Budget Control Committee. Defence Web has seen the letter. Concern is expressed about the availability of the state-owned defence and technology conglomerate to meet its contractual commitments to the Air Force as far as product support and maintenance is concerned. The letter makes specific mention of the C-130BZ, Oryx and Roy Fox systems stating the support these platforms provide for operations increased drastically. The sad status of Denel, facing attachment of assets amid its ongoing inability to meet salary and other financial commitments to employees, is not confined only to airborne assets. There are doubts about Denel PMP continuing to supply some aircraft cartridges and small to medium caliber ammunition with a knock-on effect on SA Air Force combat readiness. Denel's inability to pay subcontractors impacts negatively on support for, for SAML-SAMAG vehicles, leading to non-availability of operational vehicles. 
Original equipment manufacturer's status for SA Air Force RX and Roy Falk helicopter systems is vested in Denal. The SA Air Force Budget Control Committee points out Denal has outsourced services to subcontractors to support systems. Denal's current financial situation has created a loss of capabilities. This has impacted operation of the SA Air Force and led to most of the aircraft systems being unavailable. The inadequate supply of spares is a huge drive factor for unserviceability with an adverse effect on deep level maintenance for main propulsion components. Chief of the Air Force is asked put his mind to ground support equipment for SA Air Force assets as well. The letter has it these are unserviceable due to lack of maintenance and no spares from Denal. The SA Air Force jet components, Gripen and Hawk, also face uncertain futures. This, according to the Budget Control Committee letter, is due to Denal's inability to provide a service for calibration and maintenance of Gripen and Hawk test benches, which will impact negatively on aircraft serviceability. Denal, the SA Air Force says, cannot provide quality support to the long-serving C-130BZs of 28 Squadron. Solidarity wants Denal to work despite court order. Trade Union Solidarity is talking to Denal to assist the beleaguered government-owned defense and technology conglomerate back into a solid financial footing notwithstanding it having legal approval to attach assets. The Centurion headquartered labor organization last year embarked on legal action against the state-owned enterprise in the wake of continued short and non-payment of salaries and other employee benefits including medical and pension contributions. It said then via Deputy General Secretary for the Public Sector, Halkrad Cronier, the warrant of execution to seize assets valued at 12.7 million rand was a victory for solidarity members at Denal. They were on the receiving end of unprecedented hardship and uncertainty. Cronier in the second week of May told Defence Web that assets have been written up by the sheriff. However, that the union wants Denal to continue as a going concern is clear from meetings Solidarity represents have had it with Denal at both executive committee and board level. There is forward movement but progress is slow and it needs to be accelerated as Denal's situation worsens on a daily basis, Cronier said. On the issue of putting Denal into business rescue, as was done with SA Airways, he is of the opinion it's while being noble would not be successful as it does not take into account the legislative framework for the process at Denal. A call by Democratic Alliance for Denal to be put into business rescue is not possible as there is conflict in the legislation regulating the practice, Konya said. Thanks for listening to the podcast. For the latest leading and trusted news in defense, aerospace and maritime security, like and subscribe to our social media channels. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and have the latest aerospace, defense and security developments delivered to your inbox. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.